Hey, it's Tanaya. I am going to be showing you guys how I make my volume fans. Now, this is going to be great for beginners because if you're a newer lash artist and you're just starting to get into volume, don't be scared to do volume. When I learned volume, I got certified in volume a while back now. And I started off, of course, with regular 0.05 um, volume trays. But then I went into pre-made fans. I was ordering those, using that to kind of, so I was starting to able, I was starting to become able to offer hybrid sets. And then I kind of offer volume. I was so scared my first volume set. Um, and then I got into easy fans. Now, the reason why I'm going to show you guys how to make volume fans with easy fans, because this was my go-to especially when I was just starting out so don't be ashamed to use easy fans and what I also am going to show you guys as a trick that I use to this day I will always use it because it saves me a ton of time is I'm going to show you guys how to make your fans ahead of time and then store them so that whenever you have a client you have fans already made and they're organized by the length so I'm going to show you guys, I know I mentioned that I do that in a couple of my other lash videos. So I'm actually going to show you guys what I do from start to finish so that you can start storing your volume fans. And then I'll make another video using regular volume, um, regular volume lashes and showing you guys a technique. My favorite technique that I'm going to be showing you guys is the pinching method. That was the easiest way that I got <laughs> to get a volume lash down, like a volume fan down, because there's other methods you can use. But my baby is the pinching method, so I'm going to share that with you. So make sure you stay tuned and watch the rest of the video. All right guys, so you're going to need a tweezer. I got this boot tweezer off of Amazon. I'll try to link it down below the supply so you guys can get them. You're also going to need a lash adhesive. This is from Live Bay Lash, the Magnetic Vibe. You're also going to need a lash tile. I put tape on mines. And of course your lash tray with your lashes on them. You're also going to need a empty lash tray case. Get creative if you don't have this and then a pen as well and last but not least you're gonna need some foam tape this is just what I use some people use double-sided tape but I like to use foam tape so we're gonna take our empty lash tray and I am just going to size out some foam tape I'll put the link down to the foam tape as well but I'm gonna just size it out and then I'm just going to cut it to the proper length that fits the tray so that I'll still be able to close and open the tray without any issues. Once you have your piece cut, you're going to go ahead and just put it inside of the tray. And I like to press down the ends just to make sure it's in there nice and snug. And then I just go down with my finger to try to get a good little smooth finish. And I just press down the ends on this side as well because you can see you can have some extra foam tape that will need to be trimmed out. So you can, you know, open and close the case so you don't have any issues there. All right, now I'm just gonna get my lashes out, my tweezer, my jade stone, and my glue so we can get going. I always shake my glue before I use it. Remember, shake your glue to side to side and just drop, put one drop of glue down on your tile. Now, with the lash case, you can just write down the lengths that you want in this case. So I'm gonna do 19 and 20 millimeter because I don't have any of these lengths pre-made and some of my clients like long. I usually go up to like 16 and 17. So I'm just starting out making fans in this length. Now as you guys can see, I'm pulling the lashes off of the strip and here's what it looks like as soon as I pull it off. Now I'm going to use the pinching method. I'm keeping my grip on the tweezer, but I am just pinching the bottom and as you pinch, you loosen your grip on the tweezer. You don't hold it, the tweezer is super, super tight anymore. You slightly loosen the grip and then you're going to just slightly dip it in the glue. I like to just wipe it off after I dip it in there. And here is my fan 
and I am going to take my tray and just place it in the fan. I try to place them straight and neat, but sometimes they go all over the place, but I'm going to show you guys again. Just peeling off some of the lashes off of the strip, and this is what it looks like, and then I'm going to pinch it. Now, I showed you guys this for a reason, because sometimes you have to hold it from the bottom and take your tweezers and play around with the lashes so that it'll spread out and butterfly the way you want it to. Sometimes with easy fans, they don't spread out pretty, but you just gotta maneuver it. And then you can go ahead and dip in the glue. And I also just wanted to um, show you guys some other instances where you'll basically have to peel some of the lash hairs off. So here I am pulling it from the strip again. This is what we get. Now, as you guys can see, I had a little straggler there. So you wanna just take those off and then go ahead and do the pinching method and get that nice little fan that you're looking for all your fans aren't going to look the same they're not going to be twins they're going to be sisters they're all going to have the same same parents but they ain't all going to look the same so yep and then i just keep going peel it off the strip and then i am going to begin to do the pinching method and i have another straggler so i'm going to take that one off and then i'm going to pinch out my fan and I'm gonna dip it in the glue very lightly. You don't need a lot of glue because you don't want your fans to get like super, super stuck to this foam tape. So just a very light amount of glue. And see even right here, I got another straggle after putting it in the glue. Just pop it off and save the fan. <laughs> so you don't wanna save a good fan that you could use on a set, you know? If you could save it, save it. And we're just going to keep doing the same method. If you get any of the hairs that look out of place, you can try to, you know, pinch it and see if you can save it that way. But sometimes, like, I just take the hairs out. If it's just one or two lash hairs, I just pull it right out. And then I do the pinching method, dip it in some glue, and then put it in my tray. Now, the cool thing about doing this method is, like I said earlier, like, you can do this for any lengths that you want. So if you use a lot of... 8 and 9s, 10 and 11s, 12 and 13s, like you can pre-make a bunch of those ahead of time and then you know when your clients come you already have fans ready to go. So they're still handmade by you and then you can do this with easy fans or you can do this with regular volume fans. So I'll make another video showing you guys how to do this with regular volume fans. I use the pinching method as well. But this is great for someone who, you know, maybe you just can't get volume just yet. And easy fans may be something that you'll have to, you know, kind of use in between until you get the hang of it just doing it with regular volume trays. You know, for me, like, I just kind of think that everybody starts somewhere, you know. And it doesn't matter if you use pre-made. It doesn't matter if you use regular volume trays. It doesn't matter if you use easy fans. You know, go at your own pace. You learn at your own pace and always keep striving to be a better lash artist and learn new tips and tricks and when you're ready to you know take your training wheels off and use regular volume go ahead and do that you know don't put so much pressure on yourself especially if you are just starting out because you're just only going to stress yourself out you know don't worry about what other people say just worry about the quality of your work and you know your clients walking out happy with good isolated lash extensions that's all that matters at the end of the day boo so don't let nobody else stress you out so if you got to use something that makes your lash life easier definitely do that now i'm just gonna let the um the music play a little bit because i'm just gonna show you guys the same method a few more times again i pull them right off the strip and then i do the pinching method dip it in a dab of glue you don't want too much glue at all and then you want to put that bad boy in the tray in the correct little space where um their length matches up and then you just keep going so i was trying to do you know different angles to see which view would be the best for you guys so i really hope that i was close up enough with my camera and you guys got to really see like what's going on here but i think i did pretty good so give it a like if you thought that this video was helpful and you can see everything clearly or whatever and that is our fan but this method truly has like changed the game for me you know it also helped me do my sets a little faster because you know you're saving time from making your fans right on the spot but 
once you get used to doing this don't be scared if you run out of a certain length and then you're like scared to make your fans on the spot because that happened to me like i'm like oh my god i ran out of 12s i'm like oh now i gotta make it on the spot and i'm like it's gonna take me longer and it actually didn't take me that much longer like so don't get like so stuck on a certain method that you don't you know go back to the basics so yeah i'm just gonna let you guys finish watching me do this technique and I'll see you towards the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video I just hope that you know you just figuring out how to store your fans and just make them in advance I literally just like if I don't have a client if I'm home or if I'm at my office I'm just making fans you know I'll take an hour and I'll watch my favorite show or I'll listen to music and I'll just make fans and just kind of re-up my trays because what you'll notice is like if you have a client who's like a volume fill or uh, and then you got a hybrid set after that and then you got another hybrid fill after that like you don't have to freak out about how long it's going to take you because you already have your fans made and once you start pre-making a lot of trays like now i'm to the point where like for several lengths but just for example like my 12 and 13 millimeter tray i have like three of those filled like size of this three of them filled with 12 and 13s so i know if i go through one tray after they're probably last it's kind of hard to tell you exactly how many clients it'll last you because you could be doing fills or full sets it varies but it'll last me a good while and then i know i'll have two more trays of those lengths and once I'm dipping into the other trays that are full, I start to refill the empty ones so I like never run out. So it just really helps because you don't have to sit there and worry about making fans on the spot anymore. You'll always have your own little fan inventory, you know, and they're still handmade by you, you know. So yeah, and with these, you can even take it a step further. You can make um, spikes ahead of time if you do a lot of uh, spiky sets or whatever and you know mix it up you can make wide fans you can make more narrow ones because you never know what type of natural lash you're gonna you know see so yeah i hope this video was helpful to other lash techs out there share this with a friend or another lash tech if you think this will help them and i'll see you in the next one bye